This is the Fujifilm X70. I have a two-part review on my site in the works, but here are five simple reasons why I'm glad I bought it. First off the size. It shares the APS-C size sensor from its bigger sister, the X100T, but in a much smaller package. I can easily fit it in the breast pocket of my thin summer jacket. In fact, it's a bit too small for my hands to get a good grip, and I've actually dropped it once. Also in my hands it rests on the quite brittle battery door. So I bought the half case for it. Not only does it protect it and make it look pretty stylish, it also gives it a much nicer grip without adding too much to the size. Also, the battery door is now protected. Next we have the lens. It's a really nice and sharp 18mm f2.8. Distance-wise, it acts like a 28mm on full frame, which is an excellent all-around lens and something I use all the time on my M6. But since sensor size doesn't affect the image in any other way than crop, it is still an 18mm in terms of separation and depth of field, meaning you have to go pretty close to get some bokeh. But when you do, it's nice and creamy with clean bokeh balls. The manual focus ring can be fiddly, but since I would only use it for zone focus, it's okay in my opinion. That brings us to the screen. It doesn't have an EVF or OVF for that matter, but it has a nice articulating screen. Great for some sneaky shots, most people assume that you are fiddling with menus when you're actually snapping a shot using the awesome touch to focus and shoot function. The autofocus isn't super quick in all conditions, but then you can use zone focus and set it using the blue distance bar at the bottom. If you watch my videos on Leica, you know that I love being able to shoot raw DNGs for editing and publishing on the go in Lightroom Mobile. Sadly, like most brands, Fuji doesn't offer DNG RAWs, but rather their own format. But they do allow you to make some basic adjustments to the RAW file in camera, such as shadows, highlights and film simulations. You can then export a JPEG and use Wi-Fi to send it to your phone, make the final adjustments in Lightroom Mobile and publish. It's not as good as having real DNGs, but still useful. Final reason is the image. It looks very, very nice. Often a bit too sharp in my opinion, but I just turn off the sharpening in post and get a very clean and organic image. The film simulations can be a lot of fun. The dynamic range is insanely good for a pocket point and shoot. It's only 18 megapixels, but still very croppable, especially for web publishing. That's it, link in the description to my two-part review and also check out my Instagram for new pictures every day. Until next time, goodbye.